I'm going to start with the story of a person called Mr. Finney's Bridge. He was a poor man in the US railway system. And this is a story of middle of the 19th century. So one day, accidentally, one rod, an iron rod, went through his head. And post surgery, he recovered. But it was found that his personality changed completely. Before the accident, he was a very nice, jovial person, easy to go person. But later on, post surgery, he became very arrogant, very abusive. And that intrigued a lot the neuroscientists at that point of time. They tried to understand why this happened. So the idea that came at that point of time is that the different brain regions are responsible or distinct to do specific functions. It can be a physiological functions or it can be a behavioral attribute. And if that area gets damaged by any means, that will lead to some kind of a behavioral or physiological changes. But that does not happen everywhere. For example, if you make an accident and break your bone, the bone heals up. Okay? The muscles, they heal up. But why not the brain? It's simply because the central dogma was that there is no new neuron synthesis in the adult brain. Neurons are the functional cells which carry the electrical impulse. And this process of new neuron synthesis is called neurogenesis. Neurogenesis means synthesis of new neurons. And then this neuron being matured and getting integrated functionally into an existing circuit. So till 1960s, the idea was there is no neuron synthesis, which was a major roadblock. But then Professor Altman and Professor Das in 1965, they first discovered that in the hippocampus is a structure within the very central part of the brain, which is responsible for our memory process. So there's a part of the hippocampus called dented gyrus, where new neurons are synthesized continuously. And that is a very good news because now people can think that what might be the source of the new neurons, what is the destination, what function they do, whether we can use this neuron for some other things or not. So all these things can be studied now. So a huge area which was shut otherwise in terms of scientific research is now opened up. At the same time, also, there was work going on songbirds. Okay? So songbirds, the male songbirds, they sing to attract the female counterpart for their courtship behavior and mating success. And that happens seasonally, especially during the spring season. Okay? And it was seen when the brain was analyzed that during this mating season, the there's a huge amount of neurogenesis that takes place within the brain, a certain region of the brain which is responsible for this singing, the region called high vocal center. And the, these new neurons help in the formation of the memory of that song to create a new song, new syllables, etc., which is a great news. If we look at the evolutionary ladder amongst vertebrates, we see that there is, as we evolve, there are certain regions in the brain which got shrunk, where the other regions got enlarged enormously. And now the brain started forming more and more complex function. And that is the area which is very convoluted structure that you see in the picture of a human brain, okay, called cerebral cortex. However, if you also see the neurogenic region or the areas where new neurogenesis takes place, you'll see that there is a gradual reduction. In this slide, if you see the fish brain versus the bird brain or a mouse brain, so fish to bird to mouse, 
as we went up in the ladder of evolution, the neurogenic regions gradually shrunk. Why is that? It's actually a disadvantageous situation. But there was an argument for this. And the argument was that for to carry out complex function, we need a stable circuit. So now if you continuously generate new neuron, and then this neuron go to an existing circuit, it will actually destabilize the circuit, which is detrimental function. So the system somehow resist this kind of changes, and that might lead to a, a situation where the neurogenesis is gradually reduced. So that is one argument. Okay? But the question is, if there are new neurons that are being synthesized, whether these neurons are helpful in the repair process or not. So scientists have created two experimental models. One is by creating a traumatic brain injury model, okay? Like, you know, head injury, etc. cetera, that uh, people uh, may, when they meet any kind of accident, uh, those kind of things. Another model is a cerebral stroke model. St cerebral stroke or cerebral ischemia, meaning there's a reduction in the oxygen flow to the blood, to the brain. Okay? So in both cases, the neurons in the affected area, they die. Okay? So you need to replace with new neurons in order for functional recovery. So when people studied, like uh, we studied and there are other groups who also studied in uh, both traumatic brain injury and stroke model, we found that this, the cells which are there, they normally, what happens is, these cells are synthesized in a region called subventricular zone, which is a very central core of the brain. The ventricle is the hollow space where the cerebrospinal fluid is present. And these cells, then they normally, they migrate to a very restricted part, all the way to the front, to a structure called olfactory bulb, which is necessary for smell sensation. Okay? However, when there is injury, it seems that there are many cells which actually deviate out or come out of this restricted path and go to the site of injury. To give an example, suppose there is a huge procession going along a road. And there is some attractive thing that is going on one side. You may see that some people are actually coming out of that procession and going to that side. Same thing happens here. Okay? So there are some certain attractive cues that is coming out from this injured area and now helps the cells to move to that site of injury. And we have also seen that there is a change in the architecture of the blood vessels. So blood vessels now orient themselves towards the direction of that injury site. And these cells, the new neurons, they actually cling onto these blood vessels and migrate. So it's a good news because in both the model system, the new neurons go to the site of injury with the hope that these neurons will go there and then form mature circuit. But that is not the case because the environment is a hostile environment. Why? Because after injury, there's a lot of immune modulated because the immune system gets activated and a lot of molecules that are synthesized locally. So when the cells go to the site of injury, they encounter a very hostile environment and most of the cells die. Only a very minuscule amount of cells, they mature and get integrated into the cell. So a perceivable functional recovery is not possible in that case, okay? And that is a very, very big challenge for the neuroscientists. So what are, the, uh, what are they doing okay, to succumb this problem? So two lines of experimental uh, advancement that is going on. On one hand, scientists are trying to make that receptive area more conducive for the incoming neuron as well as trying to increase the neurogenesis process to induce more neurons in, new neuron synthesis with the hope that more number of neurons will go to the site of injury and there's a better chance that many more number of neurons will become mature and get integrated. 
and lead to a, to some extent, at least partial functional decay. Another kind of research that is going on is to make is to use the stem cells, which are the cells which get divided and form various different types of cells of the body, including neurons, and then put them stem cells in that areas or the site of injuries and hoping for a recovery process. Okay. One more challenge is in this adult neurogenesis process is that neurogenesis reduces exponentially with age. So a young adult, like the student of a school or a college, the amount of neurogenesis they will have, but the older people will have a almost negligible neurogenesis. And that's why as more and more people aging with the advancement of medical treatment, etc., it is also causing more and more neurodegenerative diseases. So that is another challenge. Okay? So there are hopes that there are neurons present within the brain or neurons can be made outside and put in. But there are challenges, a lot of challenges to make. We have till now come across or come along a long path. And now we know most of the molecular event that is happening in this space. Okay? But there is much more to know before we can come to a conclusion that what might be the most efficient way to a carry out a repair process in case of any kind of brain disorders. With that, I end. Thank you.